I'm Alec from Matter Hackers, and today I'm going to show you how to change your 3D printer's nozzle. Now, the standard size nozzle for most 3D printers is a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle. Now, this is great for heating up and having thermal conductivity, and it's really good as a balance between precision and speed. But depending on other filaments and what you're trying to print, it may not be your best option. There also exists hardened steel and stainless steel nozzles, which are great for abrasive filaments like Nylon X or Steel Fill or Brass Fill. Anything with metals or carbon fiber in it will wear down a brass nozzle to the point that your 0.4 millimeter nozzle could actually end up being a 0.8 by the time you're done with the spool. There also exists copper plated nozzles, which are really great for heating up quickly and maintaining that temperature. So you can almost get a little bit of a faster speed. If you plan on printing a lot of abrasives, you may want to get an Olsen Ruby. Now, stainless steels and hardened steels, while they are abrasive resistant, they aren't as thermally conductive as brass. The Olsen Ruby is a brass nozzle with a small ruby in the, in the nozzle, so you can print abrasives a lot easier. There are also nozzles with a much larger opening, so you can change your 0.4 millimeter nozzle for up to a 1.2 and print a lot faster and a lot thicker for stronger, quicker parts. But before you go changing your nozzles, you need to know how to actually do it, because we've seen many people break their nozzles because they didn't have the right procedures. So let's dive into what you need. Step one, gather your tools and check your printer specifications. Now some 3D printer manufacturers don't want you to mess with the print head for fear that you're gonna break it when you change things. So before you get started, make sure that if there is a warranty, you don't change it, or you acknowledge that you void the warranty by putting on a new nozzle. In either case, if you're changing the nozzle, you're gonna need a couple tools. Either a crescent wrench or multi-locks to grip the heater block and keep that stationary while you loosen the nozzle. And some variety of tools to actually get the nozzle off. And that can be either a socket wrench, a small wrench, the wrench that comes with the Oldsmaker set or the E3D nozzle set, or even print this tension wrench. But you'll need some form of this in order to remove the nozzle. Step two, heat up the hot end. Now metal expands just a small amount when you heat it up, but that difference makes it a lot easier to remove the nozzle. So when you install a nozzle or remove it, you're going to want to heat it up to about 260 degrees Celsius or kind of near the max of whatever your printer can get to. And once you do that, that will break the tension between the nozzle and the heat break and allow you to remove it. Otherwise, you run the risk of shearing off the threads of the heater block or shearing off the nozzle and leaving half of it in the heater block ruining the whole print head. Step three, remove the nozzle. So now that your nozzle's at temp, use your channel locks or your crescent wrench to hold onto the heater block and use your other wrench to unscrew the nozzle. Check what your new nozzle looks like to see which direction you should unscrew the threads. Make sure not to touch it because it is hot now. So once you have it removed, just set it down and let it cool. Step four, add the new nozzle. So make sure to heat up your hot end now past whatever you're gonna print. So if you're printing PLA, heat up the nozzle to 230. If you're printing nylon, heat it up to 270. You wanna make sure that when it expands, it still is tight up against the heat break. So once you have it heated up, you can install the nozzle by hand just a little bit, but you gotta be quick about it because if you're too slow, it'll start heating up and then it'll start to burn. So be quick, install it, and then finish it off with the wrench. Now, this tension wrench by Anders Olsen is really nice for installing the nozzle because it will give away before it hits the max amount of torque that the nozzle will take. If you pull on it too tightly, you run the risk of just stripping all the threads, and now you have your nozzle jammed in the heater block, and it's never coming out. And that's it. Go ahead and start printing. Now that you know how to change your nozzle, you have a whole new variety of materials and layer heights and speeds and all sorts of things that you can mess with now. If you have any questions about which nozzle is best suited for different materials, feel free to leave us a comment down below. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.